So hello there Leo listeners, it's Cara here from Leo Listening where I help advanced English learners fall back in love with their favourite films and TV shows by showing them how to break free from the subtitles. So today I'm joined by a very special guest who you may already recognise from the blog. It's Trisha from Vagabond English who wrote a great piece a few months ago all about um, using books and film pairs to better understand what you watch and watch it without the subtitles. So I've brought her back on today to talk about another subject which is very close to her heart which is journaling. And we're going to be talking about using your journal to better understand what you watch and also learn some more English um, from the films and TV series you watch. So, Trisha, do you want to in- tell us a bit more about yourself and about Vagabond English? Okay, sure. Um, so, thanks for thanks for having me, Cara. Um, and um, so, my name's Trisha, and I, uh, I, as you know, I run a blog, Vagabond English, and I also have, um, we also have a Vagabond English book club on Facebook, where we have plenty of discussions, um, and these are, um, basically, our community is a kind of multilingual community that um, is really interested in anything reading related, book related, story related, and then often in creative writing. Um, and journaling. So this can be for native or non-native speakers of English or bilingual people. Um, and we all kind of have different goals. So that's what our community is like. And then, um, you know, so we, we have lots of different things that we do. And one of the focuses of the blog um, and, of course, of the of the book club um, is on writing and journaling. Um, so I think there is kind of a, a, a small parallel that you can see between um, journaling around books and using Mm. books and reading for inspiration um, for your writing and your journaling and perhaps um, journaling around film to uh, or series to get more out of what you've seen um, you know to to kind of come to a deeper understanding about it or you know just for yourself or to take something away from it whether it's for your writing uh, or maybe to have like a more natural English Mm. or you know even just something simple like getting vocabulary and expressions out of you know and retaining those so that you can use them later okay Um, that's that all right that last point is really thank you for that that um, (laughs) last point is a really clear explanation so that last point is really interesting because i have had a question about well once you're watching your your favorite series without the subtitles and you're feeling good about that you know how Mm -hmm. do you kind of take that further and how do you then choose what input from the series to actually add to your English so how do you kind of know you know which expressions am I going to use is this idiom useless or should I should I be saying it or um, if I say this will I I sound weird because I think it can be hard to choose um, especially in some series maybe humorous series where um, the language use is kind of um, to make a joke, so maybe you wouldn't really use it in day-to-day language. Uh, or, yeah. or series that are really specific, like kind of cop dramas or hospital dramas, maybe like a lot of the language is irrelevant <laughs> because you're not a doctor, you're not a policeman. So kind of how, how would you get started then with just journaling for that kind of language development aspect and for enriching your English? Okay, so I think, um, I mean, we can talk about um, journaling to, sometimes you can talk about journaling to pick up expressions yeah. or, you know, the way that we say things, mm. or perhaps um, a lot of people are interested to, um, once you get to a higher level, you know, like someone like you or I, since we live, both of us have been living in France for like, you know, a decade, mm. um, you're you're maybe not as interested in learning this word and that word, mm. but in sounding more natural. Yes. Um, and, you know, maybe not sounding overly formal in an informal situation mm. or the opposite too informal in a formal situation, <laughs> you know, <laughs> with any of these pitfalls or, you know, using, a, using an expression, a common expression, but using it wrong so that everybody laughs. You know, these are, these are the, <laughs> you know, these are the things we can all understand. So I think, um, what you can do with film is obviously, and series, is to find a voice that you would feel comfortable using. You know, mm-hmm. um, you know, maybe not every person speaks the way that you would like to. So, um, you know, when I'm thinking of this in terms of if books and writing, um, I'm going to be reading things that 
I want to come out in my writing. And so mm. it's kind of the same. If I'm gonna if I'm gonna be taking away something from a film or a series, then that's maybe something that you want to think about. Um, there may be um, you may decide to choose your film or series based on the way that the people are speaking, mm. and to so then focus in on somebody, even just one character that you that you would kind of like to observe a little bit more. Mm. So that might be a good thing. Um, so just the choice, first of all. Um, and then what you could do, what you could do next is I know um, a lot of people um, in your in your audience are interested in getting rid of the subtitles, mm. but um, I'm kind of just enjoying a film, which is which is good. It's great. But when you're going to go back and take something away and just say, you know, now I want to incorporate this into my own English or mm. feel more with it, what you can do is. For example, let's say that you've got a movie that you're familiar with. Um, go back to a specific scene. Um, I think that things will leap out at you. You know, you'll say, mm. "Oh, that expression! I've I've heard this before." Or, "Oh, you know, I you know I need to." You understand it, but realize that you don't use it yet, kind mm. of. Um, and so these are times when you can, you know, maybe slow it down, maybe turn on the subtitles, take a second look at the conversation. Um, go ahead and grab your journal and your pen and just write down a few of these expressions as you observe them. Um, so that's maybe step one, just taking a couple of notes, uh, because even the, the selection process and the note taking process, I'm kind of a nerd about all this handwriting stuff. Um, but when you actually choose something and write it down, that in itself helps you remember. Mm. So, um, you know, for me, if I, if I make a list, maybe I never look at the list again, but just the act of writing it down is going to help you remember something. Mm. Um, but then if you want to reinforce that, you can go back and take something that you've taken out of, um, you know, out of a dialogue that you've heard. And this can be, you know, an expression, a way of speaking, and you can go back and you can do some journaling of your own. So, um, one thing you can do is just take a few minutes, look over any expressions that you wanted to remember. And depending how used to journaling you are or not, this might sound odd, but just grab your notebook and sit there and write, um, write out a conversation where you imagine yourself using these words. Um, and you can be as creative as you want. You can, um, you can take these words and, you know, retell the story of a film from a character's point of view. Mm. Um, you know, or you can imagine you're having a conversation with that person, or you can imagine... Um, a conversation with somebody else and how could I use these words? Um, or if you think that's too crazy and you feel like you're talking to yourself, you could just go ahead and make a summary. Um, but I think I do encourage you to go ahead and just be um, kind of creative and spontaneous about this because whenever you're, um, you know, when you, when you get out of what feels just comfortable and you have to start inventing, mm. um, it's great because you're inventing with the language, you're thinking on your feet, which is what happens in conversation. And, um, you know, and it just pushes you a little harder. So things tend to stick um, and you it, it tends to be a great way to just kind of remember and actually be able to use what you've what mm. you've observed maybe in a film. Yeah, um, definitely. It's almost like a rehearsal for a real conversation because you're kind of like taking that expression, imagining a context or um, jumping off of the context of the film and developing it. So, it, yeah, it's almost like pra sure. practice for a real situation without having to like actually yeah. talk, talk to someone yet like yeah <laughs> exactly no it, mm. it is I mean and it's um it's useful because maybe you can't always talk to someone you know if you don't if you don't live in the country if I wanted to practice my Spanish it would mm. be hard for me to just go out and chat with somebody in Spanish but I could write something quickly you know in the in the meantime and try to have a conversation or two here or there as I can mm. um so it's it's more easily accessible and it's also nice to um some of us are introverts and, you know, you do need to produce a lot of language to, you know, to kind of make a language your own and, and to feel really natural using it. Um, and if you have to produce all your language um, in conversations and actual conversations, it could be really draining. Mm. You know, um, I remember my first few years in France, I was always so tired and it was because I was trying so hard to have lots of conversations. And I think part of the drain was the, the paying attention to all these conversations, mm. but part of it was just socializing that much yeah yeah <laughs> it's not, it doesn't come natural to me but I would get out there and be socializing you know more than is comfortable for me so that I could you know learn the language so I think it's a it's a it's a nice way for somebody who's a little introverted to um 
to keep producing and creating mm. with the language, but not have to always have a conversation. Yeah. So there's, I'll just put that out there. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I like, I like that tip. I like that tip. I'm also just thinking of the whole idea of, so once you've isolated your expression, I mean, while you're watching the film or the clip or the series, you could actually then pause after the other character asks their question or whatever, and you could then say the line in the place of the character um, yeah. Again, if as long as that doesn't feel too crazy, but that could <laughs> that's kind of another another way of getting that production in there, and then that's actually the the mm-hmm. oral production, and you can play around with making it sound right, maybe getting the gestures right as well, and then you've got your sort of written version, your spoken version, your mm-hmm. version with gestures. Um, well, and if you think about it, I mean, I'm laughing, but it doesn't sound that crazy because when a film kind of becomes a, a cult type thing and you've watched it, you know, 70,000 times, um, people start quoting films yeah. to each other, you know? And so you can, you know, you can just imagine that you're practicing your film quote, um, you know, and, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to remember this, you know, snappy, you know, phrase from this dialogue <laughs> and it can be part of your repertoire. <laughs> So I don't think it's as weird as, you know, it, you know, one might think talking to your television, you know, you can, yeah. it, it's completely, it's completely normal. I mean, people do it all the time in their native language, quoting films that they've seen. This is so. true. Yeah. My boyfriend is constantly <laughs> saying that to me. We'll be watching sort of like classic French films or it's, it's yeah. mostly films and he'll be like, that's part of the language now. That line from that film, that is part of the common culture. Um, and there's been times mm-hmm. where I haven't understood these quotes from films because I hadn't seen them yet and I didn't realise how important they were. Um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so definitely people, you have to, you have to mm-hmm. know these, these lines off by heart if you, to sort of fit in or at least know what people are talking about. So yeah. yeah and- you can count it as you're just becoming, you know, more aware of the culture. So that's that's another thing you can take away too from films is just um, maybe a cultural awareness and these little these little references. Well, that's great because that then definitely feeds into helping to understand other films because as we know, there are so many references that can, you know, make it tricky to understand. Um, sure. Mm-hmm. So. Okay. Um, oh, go ahead. Yeah. I was going to... Yeah. Sorry. No, go on. I was going to add on something else that you mentioned too. Is when you when you mentioned stopping and kind of anticipating the response that mm. that a person might have. Um, you can also, um, you know, you mentioned using using journaling as you're watching a film or watching a series. Something that you can do also is as you're watching is stop from time to time and kind of play a prediction game where you mm. you kind of imagine what you think is going to happen next. And that could be what somebody might say or what somebody might do. Um, and so that's that's kind of a that's an interesting thing to do for two reasons. And one of them is that it can actually it can help you understand better. You know, mm. and that's this is a trick you can use whether you're reading or whether you're watching. Um you know, based on based on what you already know and based on even just your character's expressions or what you know already of their life, what do you think is going to happen? Um, and that's kind of a fun game, too. You know, whenever I'm watching something, I always try to figure out the ending first. Oh, um, definitely. We, we all do it, especially when it's something like it's kind of a crime drama yeah. or... Um, yeah, my mum actually ruined a film for us at Christmas um, yeah. because in the middle of it, she blurted out, oh, this is fake. So I won't say which film it is, yeah. but it's like, we were there like, mom, uh, you've just ruined the film because she'd already seen it or she'd read the book because it was oh. based on a book. And she, yeah. And then she was like, oops, okay. oops. oops. Yeah, so that's that's um, when you bring out the spoiler. Um, so yeah, but, um, but you can, you know, you can make predictions. You can say, oh, I think it's going to be this or I think it's going to end this way. And it can sort of enrich your experience of the film. And also, if you if you want to take a break, you know, if you're not watching a film all the way through, mm. um, and you take a break, and you go ahead and you you know you're kind of hypothesizing. Anytime that you like I was saying before with the creativity and with inventing something, I'm sorry, inventing something with the language, um, it's really good because when you are that little extra work that you're doing, um, it it sort of it forces you into something that's more difficult for you and thus more memorable. Mm, so. Mm. Um, so again, if your if your goal is to remember and be able to use these things later, the more you can work. Um, even though it's kind of fun to play a prediction work. game, or yeah, but no, it is creative. Anything creative and um, anything where you have to make something up, it it seems like play, but it's it, it forces you to work more. Mm. 
and so that that extra kind of that extra hard work of being creative um it does make you um yeah i'm not saying like homework like copy work but <laughs> but um but no i mean we think that we're playing or we think that we're writing a story or being creative but actually we're we're really using our brains in a different way so it helps mm. you retain helps you retain more of what you learn and connect with it on a different level. I, I love that from the point of view of, you know, because really for me, um, just listening is not enough. So, mm -hmm. so obviously everything that you can do that makes you engage more with what you're listening to. So for me, that's lots of kind of ear training exercises, but there are also other angles to approach it from, like you say, like right. prediction, guessing stuff, watching mm -hmm. even without the sound and trying to guess what people are saying. I've done that before with students. It's so funny what they come up with when they have to like, <laughs> They yeah. watch, watch a clip with no dialogue and then they have to like write the dialogue as they imagine it. Like there are so many um, angles um, mm -hmm. to get your get your brain working and also I think with some series lend themselves really well to the whole prediction thing because like if you take I always use this example um, <laughs> Game of Thrones like there's a whole almost like cult fan <laughs> cult built up around <laughs> what is going to happen what's going to yeah. happen in the book what's going to happen to such and such a character and even at the end of every Game of Thrones episodes if you've never seen them like if you were to watch like say series one to four which I think are the best like every episode ends on a cliffhanger because mm -hmm. it's really like serialistic it's not episodic it's not like random jokes and then on to the next episode there really is a yeah. progression and mm -hmm. every episode ends with like oh my god what's going to happen next so you could really like do some yeah. juice, juicy journaling and then compare your ideas with the book or your ideas mm -hmm. with the series because the book and the series do actually diverge quite a bit. So maybe you can come up with something even better. Well, <laughs> and actually, I was thinking too in terms of, um, you know, it writing and journaling. I, I think journaling is interesting because you're writing spontaneously instead of writing, you know, to turn something in or to write mm. something specific. Um, but another place that you can do spontaneous writing is um, in a discussion group. So mm. if, you know, for example, in the, in the subtitle freedom fighters group, um, mm. you know, this, I, I've, I've actually had a number of people in our, in our vagabond English book club who have said, you know, I think I credit my, some of my fluency or some of my ease in English with the fact that I participate in forums mm. on topics that I'm interested in. Because it is, um, you know, this back and forth conversation, it sort of forces you, it can force you to reply quickly, um, yes. you know, and to take part in a conversation. And so if you're having a discussion on what do you think will happen next and you're discussing it with other people, mm. then that makes it all so much more conversational too. Um, yes. So that's another way, um, books and films and, you know, they lend themselves really well to conversation. You know, they're kind of Definitely. a... Um, they're kind of a social activity as well, even though they're, you know, you're watching or you're reading, but after you can, you know, they, they really kind of invite you to have a conversation. So that's another way that you can go a step further and take something away from, you know, get some, take some of that language away and, and use it again um, mm. and, and use it in a different situation too. Yeah, so on a related kind of. Note. Yeah, no, no, that's a really good point because like, like, like the way you've set up your group on Facebook as a book club, like mm -hmm. people would obviously do get together in person to discuss yeah. books, but it also works really, really well online and it gives a kind of focus to the discussion and you get lots of ideas coming up and it, yeah, mm -hmm. it's, um, it's a really interesting way to, yeah, to use a language. But I think that's definitely the, for me, that's the best social media technique for learning a language. It's not just like putting your Facebook into your target language and then just scrolling through because yeah, I mean, right. that helps, but it's just, it's too passive. But if you, if you look for a group in the topic you're interested in and then you start engaging and asking questions and learning things, mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, I'm sure you'll see a huge improvement. Right. Um, right. So I think, yeah, part like actually participating in a conversation yes. group, you know, not just, so it's, <laughs> right. Not just, I mean, and you don't have to show up for an actual meeting, but actually, you know, in terms of the writing and journaling, this is kind of a spontaneous use of your language. So, mm. um, I think that that's another, that's another really good point. Um, mm. another option that people have. Yeah, definitely to generate that output and, and, and that way it's kind of more in the real world and not just in your in your journal <laughs> so yes yes yeah okay mm -hmm. so and any final thoughts on journaling before we wrap up um, um 
No, I think uh, I think that's pretty much it. You know, um, if you if you're completely new to keeping a journal, mm. I think that um, you know perhaps for people that are you know I've noticed that people have either been journaling for maybe ten years or they've never tried it. Mm. Um, so if anybody is um, just completely new to it, it isn't. There's no. I think that you should just remember there's no right way to do it. Um, that all you really need to do is get a pen and <laughs> something that you like writing on um, and, you know, and then just, you know, write whatever comes to mind um, and, um, you know, perhaps give yourself a time limit. So that's mm. a really, you know, a good way to start is to just say, um, you know, I'm going to do something about my, um, I'm going to write about what I read. I'm going to write a prediction. I'm going to write this from the character's point of view or mm. a dialogue and choose something and write freely um, for maybe 10 or 15 minutes and just give yourself that time and then stop. You know, it doesn't have to be a novel. It doesn't have to, it doesn't even have to be totally accurate. If you make a mistake, mm. just cross it out and go on. You know, that's, it's not, um, when you're journaling to get some, like to feel more natural and fluent, you shouldn't spend too much time um, worrying about if it was right or not. Um, mm. You can do that. You can do that separately. I'm not saying that's never a good thing to do, but just, you know, a good way to approach it is just to, you know, write freely, write for a set amount of time um, and also be just kind of write whatever comes to your mind. And remember, there's no actual correct way of doing it. There are just many different techniques you can try. But, you know, as long as you're doing it, it's a good thing. Yeah, exactly. And I like the idea of getting structure either from time or I was going to say a word limit because in, in your group at the moment, you've got people writing very short stories. Right. So you've given them that constraint. And I think any kind of constraint is going to make your writing easier because you yeah. know what you're aiming for. So again, even if you know it's not going to come out perfect, if you respect, mm. okay, I wrote for 10 minutes, that is good enough. Or yeah. I wrote one paragraph or half a page or whatever, like that's that's a good enough um output and you can always add more or like your comeback to it or you know yeah yeah I think just keep it keep it comfortable so that it doesn't mm. look like this huge open daunting task <laughs> just you know a small a small something that you can commit to and actually follow through on you know pretty frequently is is, better. is much better than sitting there with your notebook for two hours and being like oh god I have to do it all now I have to write my bestseller <laughs> now it's like yeah. um there's that famous technique of um the morning pages where you're supposed to you must write three pages it must be in the morning it must be completely um <laughs> free-flowing you must not stop and I was just like I can I am too tired in the morning to do any of this and I'm using uh, a different yeah journal structure which is called the five minute journal which is more for kind of like setting your goals for the day and just um doing some gratitude journaling mm. and that is perfect for me in the morning because I can just open it and no matter yeah. how kind of groggy and tired I am I can achieve like the small amount of writing that that I have to do so yeah and I think that's, I mean, it goes back to the point of making sure that what you're doing is enjoyable. Mm. Um, and also that, that you can live with a goal that you set, you know, like, it's... yeah, yeah, <laughs> that your goal doesn't like, make you so miserable that you, you yeah. quit or something like this. Okay. Yeah, it needs to be something that you agree with. <laughs> Great. So. Oh, well, thank you so much for all these tips. I, I'm not like learning any languages at the moment. I suppose there's always still more to learn in French, but like um, that's given me loads of ideas actually for um, for journaling, for other ideas for using films from other angles. Mm -hmm. So that's really um, great, and I really hope everyone is going to try out your tips and let us know how how they get yeah. on um, in your in your group. That would be I think that sure. would be great. And if anybody has any questions, they can um, all keep an eye on the comments and the, mm. and I'm, you know, I'm in the subtitle freedom group. So if anybody has questions following this video, I'll be there. Awesome. Great. And we'll put all yeah. the relevant links under this, under this video, wherever you're watching this, everything will be under, yeah. underneath it. So <laughs> don't worry. Right. You will have everything. Okay. Thanks again, okay. Trisha. Bye-bye. Thanks a lot, Cara. Have Bye. a great one. Bye.